Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is for F Beauty. I am wearing a wig. And if I've done my editing job properly, this should be in black and white, like like the start of um, Wizard of Oz, but without dropping a house on a witch to steal her shoes. Or hallucinating that scarecrows, tin men and lions are talking to you. Hmm. Uh, if you're wondering why the wig, it's not because I'm channeling my inner uh, from Gavin and Stacey. Channeling my Welsh side, you know. I do feel like I should be going, oh, oh, what's occurring when I have this wig on? But basically, my hair. Ooh. If I could have got my hands on Hubby's clippers today, I would have shaved it all off. He'd have killed me when he got home. But it just would not do what I wanted it to do. So, it got put under a wig. Now, the, this is not a film about my wig. Although I suppose it could be. But it's not. You will have seen from the thumbnail of the title and if you've read any of it, the description, that this is the latest episode in my photo inspiration challenge collab. Or pick, for short. Can you believe we're at episode 52 already? Just like, where did that come from? But I am delighted to be able to introduce you to someone new that I am collabing with. I absolutely adore this woman. She is just a beacon of light and positivity and she's always got a smile on her face. She always finds a positive to say about things. And I always come away from her films with a smile on my face, which is what I hope you do with mine. The person I'm talking about is, of course, the beautiful Alexis from Haute Modesty. Yes, she's wearing a hijab. Yes, she follows the Muslim faith. But yes, she still produces some beautiful makeup looks. She, I'm amazed how she can get foundation on and other makeup without getting it all over her hijab. Woman has skills, skills, because I couldn't do it, I couldn't, but if you want to find out which picture she chose for our inspiration, which palette or palettes I'm using today, most importantly of course, what this looks like. In glorious Technicolor. Sammy the Sloth is here to remind you. It is time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Thank you. So here it comes. Hey, my lovely ones. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Can you tell it's been one of those mornings already? Right. You will have um, seen on the intro that this is latest episode of my pick series so excited to have someone new to collab with this is of course the lovely Alexis from Haute Modesty as I usually do I'll talk a little bit about her now a little bit about her in the outro but the middle bit will be concentrating on the makeup <clears throat> if you've never watched any of my pick series before there are two rules. I send over a bunch of photos to whoever I'm collabing with. 
they pick their favourite and that's our inspiration for the look. Okay. <clears throat> this is the picture that Alexis chose which is beautiful. It is the lilac, crest, lilac breasted warbler. Isn't he stunning? You know it's the male one because the male birds are always prettier colours because they have to attract the females and the females tend to be uh, more dull colours because of sitting on the nest keeping the eggs safe and not drawing attention to themselves. So there's our little lilac breasted warbler. Um, as you can see lots of beautiful stunning colours. Now the two rules are one you can only use colours that are in the photo. So if I wanted to use a bright red for example, I can't because there isn't a bright red in that photo. There's a sort of a dusty pink just beside his eye, but there's no red, so I couldn't use a bright red. And the second thing is you don't have to use all the colours in the photo. And I've got um an app on my phone which pulls out the actual Pantone shades. You can move the little dots to different parts of the picture and it pulls out the Pantone shades. So it's got the light blue, the lilac, the, the mustardy yellow, the green, the deep blue and the deep teal. So my thoughts in terms of what I'm going to use to create this look is the Book of Magic from a Beauty Bay. Because you've only seen me use this on screen once, but it's got light blues, it's got lilacs, it's got the mustardy shade, it's got a greeny shade here, it's got the deep blue, and it's got the teal. So I'm like, do you know what? I think this is going to be the perfect palette. Now, as always, this is a teaching channel. So I zoom in really close to my eyes. So it's just my eyes on screen so you can see what's going on. There's a twofold reason for that. One, when I'm wincing with pain, it's a lot easier to cut it out surreptitiously. So you don't see me going, oh, if it's just my eyes and also if you're watching me on a phone screen and your eyesight's not what it could be, you can still see what's happening. It does mean when I look down to add more pigment or clean a brush, you get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak here, but that for me is a small trade-off in terms of being able to see what's actually going on. Uh, I go at a speed that hopefully everyone can keep up with, so if you are an expert feel free to speed me up. I just can't go any quicker because of chronic pain, but it means that beginners should be able to keep up with me, which is awesome. Uh, everything's done in real time, the only time I speed anything up is if I do a cut crease. I'm not planning on doing one of those today folks, so don't panic. And the final thing to say is a lot of people mistake deep set eyes for hooded lids. Even big beauty gurus I hear them say, I've got deep set, I've got hooded lids and I'm like, mm, no, you've got deep set eyes. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two where I talk you through how to work out which type of eye you have and the best way to apply your makeup <clears throat> to get the most longevity from it because makeup wears in very similar ways on both eye types because of parts of the lid rubbing against itself. That clip is up close and personal, it's just my eyes, so please don't jump and scream and spill a hot drink over yourself when the clip starts. Once the clip is done, I will be back to add some colour to these. So I will see you the other end of this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. 
I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right. I'm going to start off with a reasonably small fluffing brush. This is fluffing, fluffy brush. This is the A25 um, Anastasia brush. Gave me one of the palettes of theirs. Now I always do the shush now. I always do the blending in what I call a Viennese waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I prefer that to the windscreen wiper 
I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. And if you just rely on this movement, you're going to get it overlapping and you're going to get those telltale white stripes. Dead, dead giveaway. So by doing the Viennese waltz, we are very gently moving the skin in one direction and then the other and hopefully eliminating the possibility of white stripes. Okay. I am going to start with Elixir in here, which is a beautiful bright blue. I'm going to start roughly in the middle of my lid here. Bring this across towards the nose. I love doing super, super bright looks. As regular viewers of mine will know, the whole point that I started this series, which I'll be honest, I, I wasn't even sure it would get to 10 episodes, let alone what we're on 52 now. Um, I just love the fact that fellow creators are enjoying it just as much as I am, are enjoying collabing with me. You know, I get repeat collabies coming back, which is amazing and I love that. I love that they want to come back and do another one. Um, in some cases they say, can I suggest the next photo? Yes, absolutely, of course you can. Um, but the whole point of this is not to go out, buy new palettes, show off the latest things. The whole point of this is creating looks with what you already have in your collection and showing just how versatile what you've got already is. So I always say to people, are there any colours that you absolutely refuse to wear or that you don't already have in your collection? And I bear that in mind when I'm sending the photos over. And of course with Alexis, because she's a Muslim, there were other things that I, I had to bear in mind. So like um, when I did the episode with Katie from Makeup for Lost Time, and we did the frozen alcohol under a microscope, I knew that wouldn't be appropriate for Alexis because of her religion. Um, and I said to her, were there any other restraints on things that she would not feel comfortable having? And she said, profanity and nudity. And I'm like, well, there wouldn't be any of that because my god kids watch me. So that was a nice easy one. Right, the reason that I do both eyes like this and then move on to the next colour is because you can get the issue of one eye being a slightly different shape to the other and then when you relax your brows they don't look the same shape and if you've already put all the additional colours on it can be difficult to work out exactly where you needed to adjust the shape Right, I'm going to go into Sorcery. I've just cleaned the brush on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, they're too harsh on your br brushes. Early days you'll see me using them, but not now. So I'm going in with this gorgeous, look at this, everyone knows this. This is the colour of my wedding dress, this purple. Mm. As always, when I'm going to blend two colours together, I always start by blending it at the join because I just think that that gives a better finish and a better more um, more seamless blend and you can see where that's actually blending in with the lighter blue we're actually getting some of the deeper blue from the bird as well It's fortunate that um, I worked for three years for a print and design company, so I've got quite good knowledge on colour theory and, and how different colours mix together kind of thing. 
which always helps with this. But as I was saying, the reason that I started this is partly to use, you know, you know, palettes, singles, products that you already own, but also because I was always amazed when the big beauty gurus used to get their PR and they'd all get the same palette. They'd all do slightly different variations on a theme for a look. I just thought it was fascinating that they were pulled to different colours within the palette. So I thought, well, rather than restricting it to a palette, if you had a photo with numerous colours in, what colours would you be drawn to? What colours would other people be drawn to? Would they be drawn to multiple colours, like, you know, Bird of Paradise that's going on here? Or would they just choose one or two colours from the picture to concentrate on? And the whole idea of that fascinated me. So I contacted a couple of my mates on, on YouTube and was like, that I'm starting this new series do you fancy joining in? If they'd all said no, I think I would have done it just as me doing it. Um, but fortunately, a lot of them said yes. And now here we are, 52 episodes later, it's really taken off. But I, I love the fact that despite using the same photo, there's only been maybe two occasions when the looks have been even slightly similar. Um, and that's ones where there are only like three or four colours to the picture itself. But even those looks were different enough that you could see that they weren't the same, you know? It's just... It's fascinating to see which colours different people are drawn to. Talking of which colours people are drawn to, I'm now going to put a very, very deep colour through my crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the time to use your new line rather than your actual crease line. And I'm going to go into Cursed, which is a lovely deep blue. I'm going to tap off well. Not that I'm really worried about fallout, because obviously I do my, my base afterwards, but uh, I'm just going to start off here, just really work that in. I do have trouble with this eye, just here, and also here sometimes. I get very, very dry areas because of eczema, and sometimes I have problems getting shades to actually blend. They cling and skip, but um, hopefully it'll be okay today. So I'm just really gently buffing out the edge there and onto the outer third of my mobile lid. Just really concentrating on blowing that look out there. And then, as I always do, with the deepest colour, create my fake wing. Because my eyes have been very watery again today. So, I worry that if I try and put liner on, it may end up ruining the whole look. But by doing this, and then when I go through afterwards and neaten that line up, it'll give you the same effect. Can you see how much that's already lifted the outside edge of that eye compared to this one? It's also a great way if you're not comfortable yet with doing wings. If you start off by flicking your um, eyeshadow out. Sorry, fibro brain just went blank on the word eyeshadow, would you believe? 
if you start off by flicking the eyeshadow out like that, it actually gives you a line to follow when you're drawing your wing in. So it's like a cheats guide. You can see I'm just bringing this right down onto the inner part there. The reason that I always put the deepest part through here, and why I say to you if you've moved your crease, put that there, is because the deeper the colour, the further away it looks. The brighter the colour, the further forward it looks. So if you've had to move your crease and create a new one, this will give the illusion that the, this part of the eye is further back, further away, it will look more like a crease from when people are talking to you. And then again I'm going to do the same thing on this eye. Start off just with concentrating on really blurring out that edge there. And obviously bringing it down onto the outer third of the lid. And again, as you can see, I'm still using my Anastasia brush. I'm not one of these people that, that like using a different brush for every colour. Um, and that's another good thing about doing all of your colours before move, you know, on both eyes before moving on, is that you don't have to have different brushes for each colour. You should just clean the brush, move on to the next colour. Now with this eye, you'll see this actually moves around a lot more than my right eye does. And the reason for that, this is the eye that I'm blind in. And this is the eye that got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid. The ophthalmic hospital. Um, and even at five years old, it's caused significant damage as you can see it's got really super deep creasing just here which even the Viennese Waltz blend doesn't always help with. What you will see when I'm applying the shimmer on this eye is that I have to break my own rule about never stretching the lid out because unfortunately if I don't what happens is the shimmer packs into those creases and then as it dries through the day it flakes into my eye and uh, flakes down my face which is both painful and kind of ruins your makeup look too. There. Like that. So you'll see the how to actually apply it on this eye and then on this side, if you've got damage like that already, how to apply it causing as little additional damage as possible. Right, I'm just going to grab a pad with some micellar water on. And I'm just going to tidy up the outside edge there. Now, I get a lot of people say, why don't you just use tape? Well, because if the tape is strong enough and sticky enough to stop powder from going under the edge of it, then when you peel it off, it's going to be tugging at the skin. So it's going to be causing damage. Whereas doing that doesn't. And you can see that's given me the effect of the wings both sides. Now, I always wet my shimmers regardless of brand. But you should never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So I'm going to be using this fixing spray. You can use any liquid at all. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even 
save one of these, wash it out and just put clean water in each time you do your makeup. Just please, please don't ever, ever put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you'll kill it. Right, I'm going to go into Spell, which is the most glorious shimmery teal that I am dying to play with. See this? Look at that, isn't that stunning? Now, this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in otherwise you're going to end up with a very expensive stick rather than a brush this is the Spectrum A16 Boo You Haul which is from the Mean Girls set so I'm just going to apply this to the two thirds of my mobile lid that so far is bereft of colour. And you can see I'm using the weight of the brush to straighten the lid out as I apply the pigment. I'm going to dry that brush, pick up a little bit more pigment. It's kind of a play off with me. I either have to have a wide brush and then I struggle to get down into the corner here, or a narrow brush and then have to add a wee bit more pigment if I'm doing just the one colour across the lid. If I was doing two colours, it wouldn't be an issue. But today I am just going to give that teal its moment. And then once I've got that blended across, I'm going to use the very tip of the bristles just to gently smudge it into that lovely navy blue that we used. Oh, I feel like a kingfisher. Or a lilac breasted warbler, even. Right, so I'll show you now what adjustments I have to make with my other eye and like I said do not do this unless you already have significant damage to your lid okay just coming a little bit closer for you I literally just straighten the lid out just far enough to straighten the crease I'm not pulling it out around the ear roll And then I, as quickly as I can, get that blended in, and then gently let the lid go, so I don't just let go and let it ping back. And then the rest of the lid, I'll do exactly the same way that I did this one. But you can see, I hope, that this is moving a lot more than the other lid was. And again, just gently buff that into the matte shade at the edge there. That is such a pretty shade. Okay my darlings, I am going to pause you and I'm going to go off screen and do my base products, you know, foundation etc. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now for me, I've got to wait a little while for I can talk to you again. But for you sweetie hi, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, hey, my lovelies. Right, as you can see, I've done my usual soap brows and 
let's say I'm a little bit werewolf in London. Huh? Is an understatement. But I kind of like it because it was a really fluffy little bird. So it's a really fluffy brown. And I went in with a slightly deeper purple. Um, because it has got. If you look up just underneath the eye, it's got a slightly deeper purple underneath the um, the lilacs. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. And my eye is watering. I've always had watery eyes. Everyone in my family suffers from it. Um, it's worse in hay fever season, but it can really mess up an eye look. Right, <clears throat> going in with this flat topped brush, and I'm going to go into Amulet, which is the mustardy shade. I'm going to run that underneath. That's stunning. I love that colour. So, run that underneath my lower lash line. When my eyes are watery like this, I can't put anything in the water line. Um, but I usually finish off underneath my eyes like this, so at least it, it feels like I've finished my eyes off properly, you know? And then this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky. Great for getting under your bottom lashes and fluffing out, but you can use any sort of dense, flat topped, fluffy brush really. And I'm going to go into Wish, which is the greeny, tealy sort of shade for the top of his head. I'm going to use that. Just to soften the lower lash line a little bit and to tie the top and bottom of the look together. And before you ask, yes, I would leave the house with my face like this. And I have left the house with my face like this and have gone around Tesco's. And uh, some funny looks for some grown-ups but I've actually had kids go wow mommy look at that lady's makeup it's so pretty but you know what if I'm making kids happy then so be it I'm making me happy so if I'm happy with my makeup who cares what anybody else thinks that's what I say Now, I actually managed to get hold on Depop, would you believe, the Clinique Year of the Ox um, highlighter. I'm not Year of the Ox, but hubby is, but I'm a Taurus, which of course is a ball. And I just thought this was so cute. Look at him. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, having a moment. Right, this is a cheap lip brush that I got from eBay years and years ago. And I'm just going to destroy a flower. Because I don't want to destroy his face yet. And I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of the brow there. Because along with everything else that gravity affects folks, apparently our brows are one of them. Deep joy. Another reason to brush them up to the high heavens. And I'm going to use a little bit of this on the inner corner. And bring that round. To blend in 
with the shades underneath my eye. I don't normally wear gold highlights on my face. I normally have to go for champagne ones because I'm so pale and cool toned. But this is just beautiful for under the brow and in a corner. Look at that. Happy bomber. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to uh, wait for my eye to stop streaming and uh, fix anything that it ruins colour wise pop some mascara on some lippy do something with my hair and I'll be back with my finished look again for you instant you weren't expecting that was you I could not get my hair to look anything like the way I wanted it to today so I threw on a wig <laughs> the thing is with this wig on I feel even more like Nessa from Gavin and Stacey than ever I feel like I should be saying oh oh no I won't lie to you I really enjoyed doing this look and I hope you enjoyed it watching it too Anyway, this is the picture that was the inspiration. If you can drag your eyes off of this cheap but wanting me to get a bob, maybe, maybe not. Reminding myself of when I dyed my hair black. Wig. This is the finished look. What do you think? I used the... Um, the Sky High Mascara from uh, Maybelline. It's still a bit of a wet formula. Um, I need to let it dry out a little bit more before I use it more. Uh, the Lippy is Sugar and Spice Liner from Gerard Cosmetics and Unbutton Fenty Lippy because Unbutton was just slightly, it just needed a bit of a lip liner for me. Uh, this stunning highlight, believe it or not, Jacqueline. This one. Well, to be precise, this one. I blame Teresa, is dead. Anyway, this is my finished look. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you all, but they're leaving the films in your newsfeed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your notification status, because mine keeps getting put back to personalised instead of all, which means you get nothing. Now, Alexis. I've been watching Alexis now for... Oh, a few months now. She's just hit um, 500 subscribers, which I'm super happy for her. Um, she's a Muslim. She wears a hijab. And I'm always fascinated how she can get her makeup on without getting any of it on her beautiful hijabs. I'm like, how do you do that? I get it on my hair, let alone if I had a hijab to contend with as well. Um, but... Her tagline at the end, mine is stay fabulous. Hers is don't sweat the small stuff, which I really, really like. Um, and she does product reviews, she does skincare, she does fashion, um, she does uh, unboxings, mystery boxes, things like Ipsy and all that sort of thing. Uh, and I, I really enjoy watching her. She's even when she gets like, say, Ipsy or Boxy Charm is a particularly crappy one, and you see all the other people that have got it going, oh, it was crap this month. She always finds something positive to say about them, and I love that about her. She has 
such a positive attitude which is just great it really is uh, it's lovely to see and uh, I always leave her films with a smile on my face uh, so once you have left me a comment on what you think of this look uh, how you would have done it which colors you would have been called to uh, I'm gonna need you to be wonderful for her family members and go across to Alexis channel and subscribe, comment, like, share, all those good YouTubery things. Just show her the same kind of love in her comments box that you always do to me in mine. If you're here from Alexis's channel or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here. I don't always end up in a wig. Um, I usually manage to get my hair to behave to a certain extent with the addition of dry shampoo and hairspray and back combing and stuff but there's some days it just will not do what I want it to and in those days I either stick a headband on or a wig. Today, give us the wig. You're welcome. <coughs> It'll be lovely if you'd like to uh, join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button down there. Turn it to grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send them. They don't always. I'm having issues. In the meantime, if any of you are looking for a little bit of me time, as I've said now, for what feels like eons, as well as a rather large backside, I have a very large back catalogue of films you can watch. Uh, product reviews, other collabs like this, first impressions, challenges, tags, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So, basically, grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfy, pick a playlist, put your feet up, and just chill out for a bit. Hopefully you'll uh, come away from my films with a smile on your face and feeling a little bit more relaxed. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is your stay fabulous? And I will see you, probably without the wig, next time. Bye for now. I really feel like Nessa. <coughs>